This week's walk is through a world really unknown to me, a world I've never really explored before, but a world so rich in stories. And actually, I'm just walking past one now that I haven't prepared. This is obviously, it was a pub. I'm in Star Lane, Canning Town. What was this pub called? Anyone know? Yeah, I'm going to go for a walk around Canning Town. Canning Town E16, East London. And actually, I'm sure the West Ham fans there will know the connection to West Ham United Football Club. Canning Town was the home of the Thames Ironworks uh, Company that uh, founded uh, West Ham United Football Club. And of course, what's the chant? What's the chant? I'm not a Hammers fan. What is it? East, East, East London. So you could go Canning Town, East, East, E16. Giving you chance now, like videos, bit of history, and now football chance. That won't won't catch on. A friend of mine tried to start a football chant once, didn't go well. This is Star Park, and you can see the amount of new housing built around here because Canning Town was very heavily bombed during the Second World War due to its proximity to the Royal Docks and it's now the site of a 3.7 billion pound regeneration scheme. They say that Canning Town is a is a child of the docks, a child of the docks. This was kind of marshland here that was developed in the 1850s after the building of the Royal Docks down there. And this became quite kind of cheap housing for the dock workers who were, you know, it was very notoriously insecure work. So the better skilled workers, like the mechanics and stuff, they lived in Beckton or they lived up in Stratford or in Plasto, slightly more well-to-do areas. And this was left for the kind of very kind of insecure workers, the real dock workers. And a lot of the housing here was really poor quality. It was quite slummy in some ways. There's an area, I think it actually might be around here somewhere, just to the near of the river that was called Hallsville, named after the landlord who owned the land. And those beginnings of Canning Town really do um, give rise to some of the more famous incidents in its history, a brilliant history that has significance that stretch across the entire nation. One of the places I really want to go to quite early on, I want to find, is um, an incredible meeting, an incredible historical meeting that I'd never heard of before, didn't know, happened between two of the most famous and influential people of the 20th century. Who knows who they are and who knows where it is? It's recorded down here somewhere. This is the best story, or one of the best stories I've heard in London, in London. <laughs> I feel like I'm exaggerating, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not overselling that, I don't know. The name comes from the first Viceroy of India, Charles John Canning, or is it John Charles Canning? I can't remember which way around it goes. I'm not sure if he has any connection to the area, though. I think it just might be one of those things where they were, you know, doing a favour for one of their chums. Here's a great snapshot of what's happening in the area. You've got kind of housing that was obviously built after the Second World War. Some of it looks like it might have been built in the 70s or the 80s. And down there, you've got the, the new development around the Royal Docks, which is obviously a scene of, of massive development. Pretty colourful. With the poor living and working conditions in the Royal Docks and in the area around it, this area became a real kind of hotbed of movements for sort of social reform to improve the living conditions of the people of the area and of working people throughout the country. And that led to the first kind of radical kind of MP being elected to the Houses of Parliament when Keir Hardy was elected 
as MP for West Ham South in 1892 as an independent, but then Keir Hardy would later go on to help form the Labour Party. And in this building here behind me, some of the most historic meetings and speeches of the 19th century took place in that building just over there. Keir Hardy spoke there, Emily Pankhurst spoke there, so there were a lot of important suffragette meetings, Eleanor Marx, Will Thorne, even Bertrand Russell came and spoke in that building behind me. And the words spoken over there in that glorious red brick building reverberated throughout the land. Barking Road, one of the great highways of East London. I'm always crossing this road and walking up and down its traffic choked length. It is a great road though and it tells a lot of the story of East London as well. We need to go back down there towards the River Lee, towards the pylons, to find Rathbone Market. You'll have to forgive me for forgetting to ask you how you all are. I should have done at the start of the video, but I was just too excited about exploring Canning Town and all its wonderful stories. And this location I've got to get to at some point that is just is the thing that blew me away when I was researching Canning Town. But anyway, how are you all? <laughs> See, I got distracted again. <laughs> how are you all? You're doing all right? You're doing all right? It springs on its way. We saw that down by the River Roding last week, didn't we? Some buds there. Daffodils are up and crocuses. Spring is on its way. Unless, of course, you live in the Southern Hemisphere, then winter's on its way. <laughs> it is a curious development. So I was looking for Rathbone Market, which is like a 60s development, and turns out this is Rathbone Market, but there's got to be like a market part of Rathbone Market, surely. Can't just be Domino's Pizza. Anchor house there, calling to mind the maritime past of the area. Very sad to see this closed branch of Percy Ingalls, this great East End tradition now gone. I'm very sad to see Percy Ingalls go. The amount of times I really fancy a Percy Ingalls and it's not here anymore. Beautiful row of Victorian buildings there on the other side of the road. There we have another former pub. Now it's a Turkish restaurant. A really interesting part of the story of Canning Town is that by the end of the 19th century it became home to a quite a, a large and significant population of African sailors due to various sea links with West Africa and the Caribbean and then by the 1930s this was the largest um, African community, black community in London. You know uh, up to 1,500 um, African dock workers in Canning Town. There was a great writer, Claude Mackay, a poet, Caribbean poet, who went down and interviewed the dock workers and used it as the basis for a number of novels in the 1930s. Feels to me a slightly untold part of the story because I didn't know any of that, but there's a wonderful project 
by um, a theatre company and they've got, they've got a fantastic document you can read online. I'll link to that below. I highly recommend it. go down here down Beckton Road to a very very special location the site of a great historic meeting between two of the greatest people of the 20th century have you worked out who it is yet the A13 England's Route 66 according to Billy Bragg Billy Bragg did a fantastic version of Route 66, but made it about the A13. It's on YouTube, check it out, it's fantastic. I'm not going to punish you for trying to sing Billy Bragg's version of Route 66, which is, I think it's just called uh, A13 Highway to the Sea. <laughs> if you ever go to Shubriness, take the A road, the OK road, it's the best. And what's amazing about the A13 is it's brought us to the site that I've been teasing since the start of this video of a great historic meeting and this little park is locked. So it's in a house near the site of this little memorial garden here that Charlie Chaplin met Mahatma Gandhi. Isn't that amazing? And it happened here in 1931. What I love about this story is there's really only one uh, contemporary account. There was one journalist that was allowed to attend this meeting between Gandhi and Charlie Chaplin in 1931. Gandhi was, was in England for a number of meetings and Charlie Chaplin requested a meeting. And when this was put to Gandhi, he never heard of Charlie Chaplin. He had no idea who Charlie Chaplin was. And you can imagine in 1931, Charlie Chaplin was one of the most famous people in the world. That's really beautiful. But when he was told that he was a man of the people and that he made millions of people laugh, Gandhi agreed to meet him. And I believe Gandhi was said to have uh, reported that he found uh, Charlie Chaplin the most entertaining person he'd ever met, which you kind of think would be the case. <laughs> but apparently it was meeting uh, Gandhi and the conversation that they had that inspired Chaplin to uh, make his film Modern Times, which I think is a critique of automation and the treatment of, of working people. It's incredible. That's got to be one of those kind of great meetings between two people, isn't it? There are a few of them, aren't there, of these sort of legendary meetings that happened, you know, out of the way somewhere, and people go, wow, what would that have been like? And luckily there is one contemporary report, and it was uh, by an Indian journalist, and I'll link to that below. He wrote it up. It was published in, in an Indian newspaper in 1931. It's really beautiful, isn't it? I suppose, actually thinking about it, some of these houses would have been more or less from that era. The actual house that the meeting took place in uh, was demolished. It wasn't destroyed by a bomb. We've got to find a way across the A13 now. There's got to be an underpass somewhere, surely. You can see it's a very real physical boundary carving its way right through Canning Town and of course it's Canning Town and Custom House. I'm not entirely sure where the demarcation is between Canning Town and Custom House. I have a feeling it's Freemasons Road which is further along which we're going to see towards the end of this walk. And there's another really famous star of the silver screen associated with that part of the area. Great actor, great actor. We'll get to that later. Some of you already know who this great actor is. Is this a subway I see before me? It is indeed. Down we go. I do like a good subway. And this is a good subway. So this street here, 40 Acre Lane, does appear on the 1894 map of the area. This area where I am now was known as Cherry Island then. Look 
at this amazing site here. It's where the testing centre is, but look, it's a great big, massive area of open sort of brownfield site, derelict land that's been reclaimed. Very special street here over on the left. Actually, one of one of the most special streets actually on today's walk. I'll show you why. Rogers Road. Look at that. So many different phases of social housing on the walk today. I'd say these were kind of into war. They look a little bit like the house that I grew up in, which was built in the 30s. Although, actually on closer inspection, I'd say these are a little bit later than that. It's really, really hard to kind of find the historic locations around Canning Town, just because the amount of it that was bombed. Uh, I was looking for um, Crown Street, which was where a lot of the African sailors lived here and it was a very kind of mixed community to the extent it was called, I think it was called uh, Draft Board Alley and in my mind I'm still trying to work out whether that's, <laughs> that's offensive or not but it was a reference to the fact that you know uh, that a lot of um, black and white people lived in the same street together in uh, the twenties and the thirties gone now, gone, bombed um, like quite a lot of the other locations that I'd read about. These are really quite fine houses though, aren't they? Lived in places a little bit like this. This is quite grand civic architecture. This. So I have a feeling that that's the Keir Hardy estate, named after the great Labour politician. And this here, is Keir Hardy Recreation Ground. So after serving as an independent MP for West Ham South, Keir Hardy helped form the Labour Party and then he became the first uh, leader of the Parliamentary Labour Party in the early 20th century. And like a lot of notable historical figures you know he did some wonderful great things but they all have a slightly mixed record don't they and if you i'll leave you to check out keir hardy's wikipedia page and he said some quite dodgy things <laughs> well he said some quite racist things in his time as well so although on the one hand he's uh, sort of celebrated as a great man of the people on the other hand there's clear evidence that he wasn't really a great man of all the people so to speak but that's the case with historical figures. They always tend to be like that. That's why I don't think we should ever really put people on pedestals, to be honest with you. No one's above reproach. Not even Charlie Chaplin. Although there is a famous actor from Canning Town, or Custom House, who I think may be above reproach. I've not heard a bad word spoken about this fella. Wait till we get there, wait till we get there. I'll give it away now, because I love it, in my notes. I've got, I've got, um, Charlie Chaplin met Gandhi and a, a load of sort of uh, notes on the meeting between Gandhi and Charlie Chaplin. The next note is just a single one. Danny Dyer is from Canning Town. I love Danny Dyer. I think everyone loves Danny Dyer, doesn't, don't they? Some of you, I know, will be watching from other parts of the world where Danny Dyer isn't a household name. I can only feel sorry for you. Um, great. <laughs> it's a great, iconic figure, Danny Dyer. And there's no other way of saying it, and I've had that opinion for quite some time. Um, many years ago, I used to work at the National Film Theatre, which is the cinema of the British Film Institute, and we used to do the seasons of the great actors and the great directors, you know, Ingmar Bergman and Visconti and Jean-Luc Godard and Cary Grant, all these. And I said, one day, there'll be a Danny Dyer season at the NFT, the National Film Theatre, and people laughed at me. I still don't think there has been a Danny Dyer season at, <laughs> at the National Film Theatre, which is now BFI South Bank. But mark my words, it will happen one day. You can't tell the story of the last sort of 25 years of the British film industry without 
telling the story of Danny Dyer. Actually, I first came across Danny Dyer when I was working as an usher at the National Theatre. I worked there, probably it was only for about three or four months. And Danny Dyer was in Harold Pinter's The Caretaker on the grand stage at the National Theatre. And he was brilliant. And he was also a really nice bloke. The National Theatre is quite a kind of democratic place. The actors kind of mix with the front of house staff and stuff. Danny Dyer was always around. He was just such a lovely chap. The looming towers of the Royal Docks. Made a, a video or two down there, which I will link to below. I'm going to stay within the bounds of Canning Town and Custom House. We're just going to go down here, down Appleby Road. I'll put a link below to the recent video I did of a walk along the River Lee all the way down to Trinity Boy Wharf. And that covers the, the, uh, the River Lee side of Canning Town down there, down around the mouth of the River Lee. Because I know some people will be going, hang on a moment, Canning Town, you've not done Canning Town Station. You've not done uh, City Island and all that. I'll link to that video below. That was last month. But I say this area around here, I've never actually walked around here, which is incredible. I've been all around the Royals, I've made videos there. Beckton I've been to more times than I care to remember. But this bit in between was a completely unknown world to me with all its fantastic stories that we've been exploring today and maybe still more to be unlocked. I'm trying to work out where to go from here. I think I have to go down here. It really is a whole other world there on the other side of the tracks, on the other side of the old North London line there. That's the old railway line that was converted to use for the Docklands Light Railway. I think that line opened in 1848, so it's a very old railway line. It's a completely different world, isn't it, over there? This is Victoria Dock Road, which feels as if it should be more grand than this. It's a little bit anticlimactic, isn't it, for such a grand name? When we talk about change in London, the kind of change that happened after the Royal Docks opened in, 18, in the 1850s is incredibly profound. If you look at the 50 years between 1850 and 1900, I mean, none of, <laughs> none of this had been developed at that point just open marshy land. There might have been a few sort of industrial works down here. I think there were some coal and tar works here. The coke works, the coal and coke works were a thing, but I think that's, again, a product of the Royal Docks. It's a really good, imagine living through that period of time. The Excel Centre over there, which was one of the Nightingale hospitals. I think it was, in fact, the, the first Nightingale Hospital. I'll always associate the XL Centre with uh, Comic-Con. Used to go to that twice a year with my kids. Absolutely fantastic. So we can safely say this is Custom House here. And this is Freemasons Road, which is one of the older roads. It's on the 1894 map of the area. These places over here are boarded up. I wonder if this is part of the regeneration scheme. Another feature of 19th century Canning Town and Custom House were the settlements. And these were um, charitable enterprises set up, in some cases by Oxford Colleges, in the case of Mansfield House. And the idea of the settlement was is that rather than just kind of give money to people in the East End and try and improve their lives, is that um, 
he would come and live here. He would settle in the area and work with local communities in order to make improvements in the living conditions and the social conditions, education, recreation and all those things. And Mansfield House, they're quite a big mark on the area. The, uh, the boys club ended up producing a number of international sportsmen and they had as well all sorts of other things, public lectures and education and dances and all sorts. And they had sort of famous intellectuals come down and speak at Mansfield House. Unfortunately, I think the building has gone, either destroyed through development or through bombing. But I think the legacy is still there and I believe some of the, the clubs that it founded still exist to this day. This was once a pub here on Freemasons Row. It's not in particularly good shape. I wouldn't be expecting that one to um, open after lockdown. We've got a lovely unexpected patch of woodland here. Ashburton Wood. Look at that. How amazing is that? So this wood actually sits on the site of, a, of an, a school built in 1893 is the Russell Road Higher Elementary School and then it became Ashburton Senior Boys School and then it became Ashburton Mick Secondary School and demolished in 1984. I feel like we should take a walk through Canning Town Recreation Ground. If there were going to be any kind of rules to the films I make, I feel like one of them should be that you can't go to an area without visiting the local recreation ground. The rec. The local rec. I mean, if you live in an area, the recreation ground is such a massive part of your life. From the time you're born, aren't you? You're at the swings and you're playing football and you're running around and then you're hanging out here with your mates, aren't you, on the benches. This is a really beautiful wreck. This is really, look, this, I love this little circle of trees here. What I feel like this beautiful recreation ground is the perfect place to conclude our walk around Canning Town and Custom House. A place full of amazing stories that I had no idea about until I started researching this wall. And it's been a really beautiful experience. I've really enjoyed this walk, probably because I got to talk about Danny Dyer at last, but I think I would have enjoyed it anyway, even without the help of Danny Dyer. East London Cycle Speedway Club in the park here. Didn't know such a thing existed. Wow, look at this, what a beautiful building. Custom House Library, it's one of the Carnegie Libraries. Which are always really special buildings. Thank you once again for joining me on this magnificent walk and listening to these brilliant stories. You've been a fantastic company, I mean you always are. Thank you to my amazing supporters on Patreon, the Radical Ramblers and the fellow travellers. And if you've made it this far in the video, right to the end, then you'll be pleased to hear that my book, This Other London, is back in print. It was, it was horribly out of print for not very long, admittedly, and HarperCollins were very rapid at getting it back into print, so thanks to HarperCollins for doing that. So you can now purchase that book from your favourite online retailer, and you can also get it directly from Newham Bookshop, and they should hopefully still have some signed copies uh, from me there, so I'm signing copies for the Newham Bookshop, and you can just get in touch with them. I'll put a link to the Newham Bookshop below and that has ordering details there. Of course it is also available from the more mainstream uh, online retailers but fantastic institution Newham Bookshop so good to buy from them or you can order it through your local independent bookshop as well. So as I always like to round off these videos I look forward to seeing you on the next walk wherever that may be. And uh, once again, I, I honestly have no idea <laughs> where it will be, but it will be somewhere magnificent and we'll be there having a great time. So have a fantastic week, take care of yourself and I'll see you there on the next walk, wherever that may be.